Hello, my name is Mark Hainlein, and today for my illustrative PowerPoint presentation, I'm going to be talking about the Pearson product moment correlation, uh, also known as the Pearson correlation coefficient, and it's usually denoted by the symbol R. Now, to get a little uh, background on this, we first have to look into the inventor of the Pearson product moment correlation, and that is Carl Pearson. Now, although Carl Pearson has the namesake for the correlation, it was actually Sir Francis Galton, who was cousins with uh, Charles Darwin, who actually came up with the original idea. Now, Sir Francis Galton was actually a teacher at the University of Carl Pearson, and so it's widely accepted that they actually came up with this together. Now, in order to actually run a Pearson uh, moment correlation, we have to first understand the makings of this correlation and exactly what all is entailed in the equation. So first off, the Pearson uh, product moment correlation is the standardized measure of the strength or relationship between two variables. Now, this cannot be any type of variable. When we look at the scale of measurement, it has to be a scale level data. So either interval or ratio. So if we have something that's nominal or ordinal, we're gonna have to use a phi coefficient, a Spearman rank or maybe even a Kendall tau. So in order to use this uh, Pearson product moment correlation, we have to actually have something that's interval or ratio. Now we can, if one of our one of our variables is ratio, we can actually compare it to something that is uh, interval and, and vice versa. So they don't have to be exactly the same. Now, when we look down here at the equation, we see that R equals the covariance of X and Y over SX and SY. Now to further explain this, the covariance on the top of the equation is the standardized covariance. And so this equation is very similar to the, the equation for variance where the differences are squared. Now in covariance, we actually multiply them by the corresponding difference in the second variable. And so that's what's gonna denote the top section right there. And then the bottom is just gonna be the standard deviation of X multiplied times the standard deviation of Y. And so that right there is going to give us the the correlation coefficient and the importance of it being standardized is that the coefficient will fall within the range of negative one and positive one and so if you end up with something that's outside of negative one to positive one you've done something totally wrong uh, since it's standardized it should always fall into that that continuum now what do, what do the different ones mean? What do the, the positive and negative mean? Well, first off, a negative one is going to mean that the correlation between the two variables is a, perf a perfect negative relationship. Now, if it's zero, it's going to mean that no linear relationship existed at all. And then on the other end of the continuum, plus one or positive one is going to be a perfect positive relationship. And so we're going to be using these to describe how two variables correlate together, uh, whether it's a tight correlation, uh, and also too, we'll look into you know how we uh, actually describe these correlations. And so there's a multitude of different ways that we uh, use to quantify these, and uh, no way is right, no way is wrong, but uh, it just kind of depends on exactly which one you're using and what field of study that you're in. Uh, so whenever we look at these numbers, first off, we see that it has either the plus or minus, and it also has a number. So the coefficient is actually going to indicate the magnitude of the relationship of X and Y. And so that's the number. And then the plus or minus is going to indicate the direction of the relationship. And so to, to further illustrate this, we can see on the first correlation right here, we have a positive correlation of 0.4. Now, this is, you know, a pretty moderate correlation. And uh, we see that the different data points are pretty closely grouped. And uh, moving on to the middle one, where we have no correlation at all, we see that all the data points are just scattered about. We, there's not a direction, we can't see positive or negative. And then the last one is a negative 0.4 correlation. And so we see that it starts to slope down in a negative pattern. And the, uh, the different data points are, you know, you know, pretty grouped, but not still not as tight as, you know, a perfect correlation because a one or a negative one is gonna be a straight line. Uh, for it. And so, like I said before, there's different types of naming conventions that we use in the field of agriculture education. Uh, Davis uh, 71 is uh, pretty popular where it puts it in a different uh, category such as perfect, very high, substantial, moderate, low, and negligible. Uh, so anyways, uh, here's my references for the uh, interactive PowerPoint and thank you.